Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about all the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source, just, you know, things we find interesting. I am Vin Stone, joined every week, um, Hollywood Jill in L.A. What's going on, man? <laughs> and um, Hi. <laughs> no longer in Space Portugal. It's been a long time, but I felt like saying that because it's been a minute. I haven't said Space Portugal. Still love you, Space Portugal, but in Britannia. That almost is, two years. Almost two years, man. It just seems like yesterday. One page of wow. my and everyone watching this live. How's it going? A bunch of exciting stuff to talk about uh, this oh, week. Yeah. Um, yes. What have you been up to, Joe? Oh, boy. So I had a great time again on Big Daddy Linux Live last Saturday. Went to Community Hack Night at Riot Games on Monday and heard a lot of uh, really nice uh, talks and about some neat projects and uh we are making plans again for another linux gamecast party soon yay <laughs> that sounds so, truly horrifying like a bad idea but okay yeah <laughs> it's been a while since we had one because part of the reason is uh, you know all of us are working and doing stuff so it's been hard to coordinate but we're, we're going to get it together and have a big summer linux gamecast party <laughs> what's up in hobbit land <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of us are in New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> so um, over here, mm -hmm. well, I mentioned last week that I uh, had I was forced to give my um, work XPS 13 to someone in Birmingham. And my boss was kind enough to bring me another computer from Birmingham to replace that XPS. <laughs> I, I talked this about awesome. this earlier. I just imagined Pedro as being like a tsunami of pout for like the last two weeks. <laughs> oh. I guess I conveyed just how unhappy and uh, in disagreement I was with that particular idea. So person breaks laptop and gets a new one. No. But hey. If it means getting a precision 7510 with a Xeon a 1535 quad core 8 thread for now, uh, Yay. I have to disable hyper threading at some point, <laughs> and a NVIDIA Quadro M2000M, it's with 32 gigs of RAM, DDR4 RAM. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it's nice. It, it, that, that, that's a nice laptop. That's, like a, that's a great laptop. I can't wait to have to put Windows 10 on it and uh, play Solitaire. Probably going to be in about two weeks. <laughs> oh, <man. Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> uh, over here, I've been playing around a lot with Odor and making it obey me, putting it into multi-track with automation recording. It's kind of a boring stuff, and you're like, tell me how to do that and, uh, with podcasting, which I will do. I uh, also made a video for the public. I made it like, last week. I put it up for Patreons. Uh, not really a guide, but if you've ever been curious, like, how do you stick together a show? Which, fair warning, I am still very much learning DaVinci, but I was up to the point, it's like, this is how we make a show. So if you are curious about that, you can see it on uh, LinuxGameCast.com and grab all that fun stuff. But uh -huh. how about we get right into it with Mozilla? They've done a thing, and... Uh -huh. I think everyone's generally okay with it. You know, there was no like, yeah. oh my God, this is a yeah. bad thing. This mm -hmm. is terrible. No, it's generally good, man. They're going to be launching some paid services, which I think is, you know, a premium thing and definitely a good thing because as the old adage goes, you know, if you don't pay for the pay for it, you are the product 100%. And, you know, fortunately, you know, open source projects like Mozilla have gotten around this with donations and, you know, sponsors and search engine money from the Googles and all that. But, I mean, they're looking at maybe a possible premium VPN, which would be good. Mm -hmm. And Pedro, you said something about Pockets. Yeah, well, the Pocket is something that uh, Mozilla got a hold of a while back, and that's like the first thing I disable. And if that's one of the features currently in Firefox that, uh, in Firefox that ends up being paid for, that's okay. It, it, mm -hmm. Again, I that's the first thing I disable with every new install. And yeah, if all the premium features are like extraneous and superfluous stuff that's coming in, like new stuff, I don't see the problem, honestly. Basically, anything that will help uh, Firefox develop without compromising on what's already there, I'm, I'm good with. I'm totally down for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I totally agree, Pedro. And, you know, we actually talked about this last October, Mozilla offering the Proton, Proton VPN service for a $10 a month subscription. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mozilla realizes more services need to be included in the Firefox Premium browser other than just Proton VPN at $10 a month. 
when a cheaper VPN service are is available. So you know, maybe they realize, oh, we should put put more in that subscription or for the premium browser. And it also makes sense that the free version of Firefox will offer a limited VPN service like that of Opera and, of course, the Tor browser because because there are browsers that do. <laughs> so that, that makes sense. Totally. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's going to be kind of tricky because we definitely haven't, you know, you can't charge for a browser. Not since like 1996 or 1997, you used to have to pay for browsers, kids. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wish them the best of luck. I'd really like to see a... You know, I'd get them a check anyway for, you know, whatever they're going to do. You know, if it's five, ten dollars a month or a week or whatever, you know, that's fine. I want to help out the Mozilla project. But mm -hmm. what I'd really like to see is like maybe work on that Jack Audio support for that one person that's asking you really nicely right now on the internet. Because uh, you know, output it's work. Wednesday. Yeah. I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, honestly, just like better WebRTC support in general, like don't spawn like four audio syncs. Mm -hmm. That, that yeah, would seriously, be good. those audio dispatchers have got to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, keep up the excellent work, excellent browser. Uh, we talked about this Indeed. a while back ago. Uh, a, an organization hated Linux so much they shot it into space, Joe. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, that, that uh, it's not this one. Yeah. We're not doing that it, it's coming later. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I just scro I just scrolled down. So <laughs> Do you... don't worry. Don't worry. We'll talk about we'll talk about it later. Uh, okay. Right now we have a big organization actually um, getting together with another big organization, uh, namely Team Green. Nvidia is uh, getting together with the Big Blue. IBM themselves, <laughs> and they're going to make that new, uh, well, new, it's not new, that Linux yeah. distro that they bought uh, to basically help get the uh, NVIDIA drivers up to snuff when it comes to Red Hat. And it's um, it's it's the full RGB. It's IBM Blue, NVIDIA Green, and the um, Red Hat for Red. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, the two things, the two big ones from this is that Red Hat is simplifying the driver installation and also offering more options, uh, to the, um, the users. If you want something that's stable, you can do stable and stay there. If you want, you can track the latest releases or you can track a specific branch like the development branch that has the new Vulcan stuff. Or you can track the uh, mainline branch, the short-lived branch, so you can stay up to date with the mainline features. You can do all of that much more easily now than you could in the past. And they're also lessening the DKMS dependency, which basically what they're doing is going back to the old way of shipping the pre-compiled kernel mods with each kernel version. But if you are deploying your own custom kernel and you want to have the ability to use DKMS to automate building the kernel module whenever there's a new version out of that custom kernel, you can do that. You can still do mm -hmm. that. So it's it's good. This is good. <laughs> yeah, really good. Um, you know, my first thought when reading this article is that making NVIDIA driver deployment this easy in rail is a very, really, really smart choice. And in bringing it back again, like Pedro was saying, especially when installing the NVIDIA drivers on their competitor's OS Ubuntu is so easy. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's really nice that they streamline that process, most definitely. I don't know. I, I will take uh, one small issue in mm. the competitor's OS. I, I don't see if, like RHEL or Scent competing with Ubuntu in the same... Uh, no. mm. <laughs> Maybe mostly because well, Rattler set are already winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could definitely be a thing. But, and, you know, it, it's good to see. I can understand why it took a minute to do it because, you know, when you typically think of like deploying Scent or RHEL or anything like that, it's going to be headless anyway. So, I mean, you're, you're going to have a management yeah. system to do that. But getting that together where it's not so difficult and, you know, even Fedora works with Bumblebee, right? It does, because that's what I'm currently <laughs> running on that decision. It's like, oh, Optimus works with Bumblebee, and it was just, you install Bumblebee from the Fedora repo. Hmm. There, done. <laughs> pretty neat, pretty neat. Um, Zorn OS, man. It, it's been mm -hmm. making a lot of buzz. 
Indeed, and if you've paid attention to Twitter over the past week, you've seen a lot of Zorin OS. And this is version 15, and that's why it's been in the news. It's a new version, it's out, you can go get it. Mm -hmm. It's uh, It's got a couple of new features. It's got Zorin Connect, which is based on uh, GS Connect, which in turn is based on KDE Connect. It performs faster. Uh, they say that the since they're based on the GNOME Shell 330 and the kernel 418, performance optimizations have were actually big features of those two releases, so that's good. They have a new desktop theme and a bunch more stuff. And I'm looking at it, it's like, oh, I, <laughs> yeah, see that layout that they have right there in the video. It's like, that's very reminiscent of Windows. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if Zorin came in and ate mint's lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, they did, you know, they did a, a separate Windows look like desktop and Mac yeah. OS look like <laughs> desktop. Yeah, to make it easier for the average com uh, computer user coming to Linux, which is really great. And, you know, I've always been very impressed with the look and feel of Zorin OS. Um, and the light version for older computers has one of the most visually appealing implementations of the XFC desktop. It's one of the prettiest ones. So so everyone out there who complains about XFCE looking a little boring, try it on Zorin. It looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so and now the NVIDIA drivers are available via the ISO. And this release, of course, of Zorin is based on Ubuntu 18.04.2 LTS. So very stable. I think mm -hmm. it looks neat. Um, Zorin Connect, 100% with that, because that's going to yes. be syncing your desktop notifications, SMS, shared files, and uh, media playback. That's out of the box. Good on them for that with the adaptive background. Night mode, that's out of the box. Also neat. And a to-do app. I was like, ah, I, I really don't see the point in that. But... It's integrated with Google Task and Todoist. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. you actually put some thought into this. And, mm -hmm. oh, shots fired. The future of Linux apps. Flatpak support baked in. Um, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's also a thing. With the, what do you think about this, Pedro? I mean, it, it does ship with like a touch layout compatible setup. If you have like one of those yoga laptops, kids, make sure you got a yoga laptop before you like, do the flipped eagle or whatever yeah it is, don't, don't don't <laughs> flip the back unless yeah uh but uh no that's interesting because <laughs> during the uh, in the article when they talk about the touch things strider keeps telling me that uh, gnome 3 isn't a uh a touch inspired uh desktop environment mm -hmm. so uh the fact that they use the gnome application grid drawer thingy is, in my opinion, completely incorrect because clearly uh, GNOME 3 is not at all a uh, touch-focused <laughs> UI. No. 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 GNOME 3 was designed <laughs> no. to test uh, batteries for laptops. Like... To drain them as quickly as possible. Gotcha. <laughs> no. Um, okay, a couple of bits of KDE news. One with KDE and Live. New version. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, so Caden Live 19.04.2 is out with lots of bug fixes and refinements. And there are fixes for compositing issues, grouping inconsistencies, and, and misbehaving guides and markers. And for me, one of the biggest fixes is sometimes Caden Live would crash when opening old project files. They fixed that. Yay! <laughs> so in the timeline, not scrolling when the cursor with the cursor has been fixed that's always been an annoyance i gotta because, say man uh candy, you know. <laughs> candy i'm on windows we're in the comments section how can should i update kit don't um but <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, as Ven said, Caden Live is a bit more polished after the major refactoring that took place. So this wasn't a major release, but it was, you know, clean things up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely down with that. Um, you know, it's the second minor release of 1904 with, uh, what, 77 bug fixes and yeah. usability. It's, they're just polishing after that major refactoring, and it's, it's a good piece of kit. It's very mm -hmm. stable. 100%. Uh, I mean, I still use it for, like, doing our credits and stuff like that and mm -hmm. um nothing but the best for them so i'm really happy to see yeah. them rolling on so 
Pedro, you're about to tear KDE apart. Mm-hmm. Well, I am the one who uses it the most often. <laughs> yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's only been 16 point releases since uh, Plasma 5 came out. What's, what's Plasma? I... Let's say you're genuinely me and I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so <laughs> KDE is the K desktop environment. Okay. And Plasma is what they started calling KDE 5 specifically. Uh, it's uh, because it, it's got a much more, uh, by default anyway, a much more muted um, tone. Did, did they and have like a like conference and committee to see what could be the most confusing thing to come up with in that one? <laughs> have you used Linux recently? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never heard of it. Tell me more. Because that's all distros. <laughs> Uh, no, but this uh, this one is just for uh, KDE itself. Uh, they have uh, Plasma 5.16. It's out if you're running KDE Neon. Even the user version has this available right now. And that's actually what I've been uh, testing it with. And I poked a little bit at it uh, on the X240, the ThinkPad X240, because uh, it's not in Solus yet. And I do have to point out that it did take them all those 16 point releases since the since they moved from KDE 4 to KDE 5 <laughs> to reintroduce a teeny tiny little bit of functionality which is completely superfluous but uh, it was functionality that was already there that they deliberately removed and 16 point releases later they are reintroducing which is the ability to mm-hmm. go in and customize the theme for each and every individual aspect of yes. the desktop, which was something that was really nice to have in KDE 4, mostly because That's most of the end, themes... Okay, that, that was always like one of the things about KDE, man. You could make yeah, it... Yeah, it, it's been there yeah. since 3. Yeah. A- yeah. And they got rid of it with KDE 5 and people shouted at them, and rightly so. Uh, yes. And they are finally reintroducing that. Uh, now, they do say there's like new notifications. Uh, the notifications, they're all bundled together. So if one application gives you multiple notifications, you can go through and see exactly which ones those were. And it, they won't interfere and won't get mixed in with another application. Uh what the one thing I immediately noticed was as soon as I got the notifications like you're now connected to the wireless, I saw a little like dwindling bar down the side. It's like, oh, it's a little timer bar like you have for Instagram. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they also have a bunch of new improvements for uh Discover and some of the other KDE specific stuff. KD Connect still works just fine, so I'm good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I yeah. think, uh, like Dak pointed out, uh, you, you said a negative thing about KD, and uh, he got a little triggered. <laughs> Jill. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, like Pedro and Ven were just saying, I'm happy all this customization has just come back. Come back. That was one of my complaints with KDE, is they took a lot of that out. So now it's coming back again. And um, in this release, there are several refinements to Plasma Software Center Discover, which now has two distinct areas for downloading and installing software on the update page. And the completion bar when installing apps in Discover now works correctly and automatically removes the apps mm-hmm. from the list and populates correctly. <laughs> that was always oh, a complaint. Oh, that only took them how many releases <laughs> since many Discover releases. was released? Uh, yes. Five? Six? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that's awesome. I've always liked the look and feel Discover. So all, like, fixing all these issues is just wonderful. <laughs> they need oh. to integrate better with flex packs. Uh, yeah. No. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, I heard snaps of the future. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't hate. <laughs> Don't hate. <laughs> I'm not hating. I'm just saying. Listen, man, I don't trust either good. of you with your peasant desktop <laughs> environments. Let's talk about something professional. Let's talk about XFCE. <laughs> hey, but man. This I'm, is about Spotify. Dude, I'm going to write. Listen, we're about to get a new version of XFCE, and it's going to be rough. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> so I'm going to be talking about the nice, happy, stable version and a plug-in. If you like the music tunes in your ears, uh, particularly Spotify, there's a new plug-in. That has been hacked together that will give you integration with the panel and it is definitely neat admittedly admittedly it's a little bit involved but this is linux let's rock and roll you're already on xfc so mm-hmm. we know you're a clever one because uh, it requires creating a developer account 
But eh, all right, you should be able to get your way around that. And again, with that neat factor, because it will show the current song in the taskbar, which is like, look at that. So mm-hmm. you don't need much for it. I mean, just the plugin JQ, which, you know, pseudo app and JQ or uh, DNF install, curl and XFC for mint. There's something, I don't know, if, but I've heard Mint died, but I don't believe them. <laughs> but yeah, you do need that access token from Spotify. Easy enough to do. And I think this is kind of detailed. This is not like, oh, this is amazing. Best thing in the room was like, that could be handy. How many times have you been mm-hmm. like, hey, which one's that? And you don't want to open up the app or anything like that. You just kind of mm-hmm. want to glance. You know, you kind of want to know, but you don't want to know enough to put effort into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's really nice and minimal having it just sitting there in the in the tray. And I like that it has when when you hover over the song title, a thumbnail of the album comes up. That's that's really a nice touch. In instead of having to go, you know, it's in the, the bottom center instead of having to go to the right where the um, usual system tray notifications are. And Clementine does that, you know, with it's their a notification panel plugin. You can put, put it wherever yeah. you want. But yeah. I was going to say, it's like, I saw you put that in and I was like, no, it doesn't. I built oh, it. I put it, it on didn't. XFC. It's like, it doesn't have that tool. T- oh, because uh, you disabled. <laughs> I always disable the tooltips, regardless yeah. of desktop environment. I always yeah. disable the tooltips. I don't want that hover over <laughs> crap showing up on screen. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not be completely against any and all notifications, period, because <laughs> reasons, man, yeah. I know Aww. I have to disable that. Like even the, okay, do you at least disable the ones like you are now connected to the internet? And I was like, I know yeah. you go away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, never show this again. Mm-hmm. Never show this again. <laughs> right. Or uh, <laughs> DNF or anything like that. Drucker was like, hey, update S-E-Linux. your go away. Yeah. It's like SE Linux, just. Dude, shut up, go away. <laughs> hey, that was my new record when I put Fedora 30 on. Two full days. Two full two days. Hours. Uh, two hours. I was going to yeah. fight it out, though. I went to war. I walked in knowing what I was like. All right, we're going to make this. No, we're not going to make this work. This is good. Nope, you're still not ready all this time later. Hey, mm. animation. Yeah. So we, we talked about one of our favorite uh, video editors, Kaden Live, that has been updated. And now this is actually one of my favorite 2D animation software piece of software and this is pencil 2d version 0.6.4 has just been released and it is a simple to use to use animation program and great for learning hand-drawn animation it also lets you layer images and animations and draw using vector uh, a vector layer or a raster a layer Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, Saitama. Oh, <laughs> season oh, yes. two Netflix. Come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> True that. <laughs> so yeah, this 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 program is unique in, in animation because it offers you both vector and raster animation, and it is extremely lightweight and comes in at just over thirty eight megs for the app image. And it's a really good 2D animation program to learn before you use the more advanced Synfig Studio 2D animation software or even Blender's Grease Pencil. So this is a really good one to start with. And this is actually one I recommend my beginning students who are learning hand-drawn animation to use. We've used it in my class. It's awesome. (laughs) Hmm. Uh So how exactly does that work out? Because I got a friend that's an art professor and Mm -hmm. he loses... 90% 90% of the class at the beginning when he's like, we're making our own canvases. I'm like, no. Oh. So does that happen in animation? Like, you're going to learn to draw by hand with a pencil and a pad. And they're like, nope. Nope. No, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I even teach my students flip books. I mean, the beginning well, that's students. That's definitely got to be like know. one of the things, though, because yeah. there's going to yeah. be generations that have come in. And they're like, what are you doing with rubbing graphite on pa- yeah. a dead tree? What <laughs> What are you, a savage? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what are you, a caveman? Right. <laughs> I think, you know, it's definitely, I just wanted to give it a mention, man, because, you know, sometimes yeah. I art myself and this looks, like you said, easy enough to get into and play around yes. with. Uh, they want to make the mention that uh, just in the future uh, releases ending with even numbers will be bug fixes, which is always, always yes. a good thing. Yes. <laughs> now, this is a very good thing, especially if, uh, you know, you're living with someone who likes to draw a lot. And every mm-hmm. now and then she mentions, like, I would like to start doing some animation. Do you know any yeah. software for it? It's like, 
Now I do. <laughs> now yeah. I actually do. <laughs> do that, man. Get crazy. Get crazy with the cheese whiz. Like, get into it. Do, do things I do sometimes. Just like, hey, look, I'm going to learn to do the thing. Come back like, a week later. Like, so what do you need to know about it? Um, <laughs> Hello, young grasshopper. Oh, uh, right? Uh, yes. you, you got to be careful going down those rabbit holes, man. Uh, okay, let's pretend uh, that I didn't say this earlier because we made the last minute <laughs> change to the show notes that yes. only made it about halfway through my workflow uh jill the linux yes. server is coming home from space it's vegan and we're all doomed yeah this is our 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 linux supercomputer returns to earth so the hp enterprises spaceborne supercomputer which was launched october 14th 2017 on spacex's crs 12 mission to the iss returns to earth after 615 days on the iss it made its safe return on the SpaceX Dragon this week. Yay! So, and they wanted this computer there because they wanted to test how a commercially available computer would handle the rigors of space. And it worked beautifully, despite a few hiccups. Having a super cute computer in space would also be a, a great for long journeys into space, such as to Mars, and for scientific experiments. And we actually talked about this last November when nine of the 20 SSDs failed, probably due to cosmic rays. And mm -hmm. I'm just, I, I'm not surprised that I buy this because pizza box servers for the win. <laughs> and they can withstand the perils of space flight. They can withstand almost everything else. So, and so this didn't surprise me a bit, but there, there were only a few hiccups uh, with this deployment, and one yeah, was one of was the astronauts. To, yeah, yeah, so you want to talk about it, I was going to say, Pedro? don't gloss over <laughs> those particular hiccups, because yeah, uh, no. one of the people up well, there turned it off and it's like, <laughs> Oh, crap. <laughs> yes. What do I do now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, it, when it, when they uh, turned it back on, it was fine. Again, Linux for the win. <laughs> so <laughs> Linux has truly progressed. It can be rebooted. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you hear that, Jordan? You hear yes. that? <laughs> it's that's, that's really cool. That came back one piece. Everything works. Maybe they learned something. Um, you know, just mm -hmm. quit, quit treating uh linux like matt damon okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> keep it on yeah. it's brilliant so you know, if a supercomputer can go into space survive the journey up there and then survive yeah. the journey back down yeah yeah, yeah pretty good <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> it is neat uh one thing before we get out of here this is the uh opinion piece maybe a way to put it hmm? This mm, is yes. the ramblings of uh, someone who needed something to write desperately and they had like, oh, wait a second, Facebook is evil. So let's say they're a threat to open source. They're the main threat to wait, open source. Wait, hang on. It's oh. Facebook is evil. Let's see. What do our readers not like? God. Oh, Microsoft. Okay. We got that. We got part mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Okay. We need to put part three in the open source. There we go. Yep. <laughs> and uh, Facebook, according to this Linux journal article, <laughs> is uh, the main threat to open source. And basically, the author goes on to describe that uh, because Facebook has been releasing a bunch of different apps and they've been sort of creating their own ecosystem for Android uh, and the argument seems to revolve around the fact that Android is based on Linux and therefore should be considered a bed for open source um, Pedro, things. I, I got bad news, bro. Yeah? <laughs> Fuchsia. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Google yeah. is working on I mean, that. I'm not this, saying like yeah. this time next year, Android's going to be a second class citizen, but it mm, yeah. <laughs> future will be a thing. Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, Android has a big adoption out there, and people aren't too keen on updating their phones, as I know. Hi, Nathan. Still using the old <laughs> phone, I see. Uh, yeah, no, so. Basically, the argument seems to stems like, oh, in comparison, WeChat in China has been doing that same uh, sort of creating their own environment in people's mobile devices and keeping them locked into that. And then people don't use uh, open source or free software on their phones, you know, their phones that are using Android, uh, which, yes, it is running the Linux kernel. But there's enough Google not open source stuff in there that makes that 
entire argument moot. But uh, the biggest, I think the biggest... Uh, Have you ever leap- decompiled an ABK, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might as well be open source, even if they try to Yeah. Uh, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is kind of a joke. I, listen, man, to put a bow on it, I get the point, man. I mean, the, the whole is like, let's make our own Bastodon version of Facebook, which won't work. Uh, open mm-hmm. source, I think at the end of the day, uh, I mean, it's a tech, the, the whole principle behind it, the idea behind it, you can use it for good. Or you can use it for evil. And that's the trade-off mm-hmm. with the GPL or BSD style licenses. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't get to, it's like, come here, um, put your finger in my morality detector before you can use this code. That's not how it works. It's never going to work like that. And it's better for it. And mm-hmm. neither Facebook or Microsoft pose any threat to open source. I mean, quit, there's no, there's no, I know you want to put like, hey, look, boogeyman, but yeah, Microsoft. Microsoft is turning into a services mm-hmm. country, and Facebook is going to get legislated out of existence. It mm-hmm. just doesn't know it yet. Yeah, <laughs> Joe. Uh, well, you know they're trying to to uh, listen to Facebook is trying to listen to the future of a decentralized internet and would like to emulate what the WeChat app is doing in China, which with a bunch of the the small little apps contained in one big app. So um, you know that yeah. definitely is a thing, and and. It would be a Facebook OS, essentially, at that point, <laughs> if it yeah, survives. How do you go from <laughs> like, okay, so Facebook is creating their own environment, their own OS, as it were. Uh, how exactly is that a threat to open source? Is it a bigger yeah. threat than Windows uh, was to open source? Listen, mm-hmm. man, I needed to finish meet my word count for the end of the month. And... <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is a fluff piece. <laughs> it, it's something to read. Don't get upset about it. Uh, okay, yeah. we need to get into a slice pie. Before that, I uh, want to thank each and every one of you who are making this show possible, because unfortunately, we can't do this absolutely for free. we got to pay those server bills. Actually, bandwidth bills. Those are fun. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But we do have a gang of people, and we call them Patreons. Yay. Yes. We love you. It is brilliant. <laughs> we have 117. Of these awesome, fantastic human beings <laughs> hanging out in chat with us right now, making not just this, but our big show on Saturday. We got streams on Tuesdays, streams on Thursdays, streams on Friday, and plans to do more. If you do kick us a few shackles, mm-hmm. we're like, hey, man, can you spare four quarters a week? You get early access to our uncut series. I had to re edit that. That's why it took so long. Didn't cut out content, <laughs> but I had to fix the time sync. Uh, if you like our nonsense, there's an extra hour of content, audio version for your custom RSS feed where you can listen to everything that's going on behind the scenes. We try to keep all that nice and interesting. You, occasional, all right, let, let's be real. There's a lot of movie <laughs> reviews, a uh, lot of TV show reviews. Uh, yeah, this this definitely happens. Uh, we do have mm-hmm. uh, all this stuff that you've helped us make. We do, we got Wish Zones, Pedro's got one. If you're like, hey, buy this thing. Uh, yep. Jordan has one. I have one for the studio. It's incredibly boring. Uh, a multitude of ways that you can help us do this. And if you're like, man, whatever, I just watch you support those who support Linux. Forget us. Go help somebody else because this is a community. This is a team project. And uh, yeah. it's the only way we're going to get through it. So thanks. For and uh, we also have new LWW merch, which I am no, we wearing don't. right now. <laughs> Oh, come on, Jill. That's like two weeks old. That, that, that's boot- yeah. <laughs> that's boot- hey, like, man. But, it, but it came last Wednesday after the show. So <laughs> now I'm wearing it. <laughs> this is true. We're horrible at marketing. We do have the um, yes. store, which is at LinuxCMCast.com. Mm-hmm. And go check that out. We got Frig shirts. We got uh, LG. We, we have our faces on shirts. This is the only shirt I do not and will not own out of our collection. And we have the LWDW Classic, which needs glitter, Jill. It needs bedazzling. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> there's I plenty of open that. space there to <laughs> add things. Yeah. Like, just ironically, yes. just let Steve lose on it. Um, <laughs> it could be truly horrifying with enough attention. <laughs> that is brilliant. Thanks for letting us do this. Stick around your names and credits and all that. We try to say some of them. It is kind of fun. All right, now, now, back to the show and back to the fun with a slice of pie. Dun, dun, dun. Tiny tangential slice of pie this week. No, this is a big honking chunky slice of pie. This has got like three extra peas in it, man. Because 
Oh, oh you 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 mean thick as in yeah. the two C's? Okay, no, three C's, three C's, man. <laughs> three. Okay. I, I have invented new thickness technology. <laughs> this is bigger than the pie. <laughs> you know what? It's a damn tablet. A, a damn yeah. Linux tablet. Suck it, YouTube. That's, you're going to demonetize everything we do anyway. So, uh, this this has been like a unicorn glued to some jelly toast. Uh, this is something that we've all <laughs> wanted, and no one's bothered to get around to actually making it. So. The author here, uh, it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make my own, you know, and it's got blackjack, right? So <laughs> this is going to be rolling a Justin Nano, uh, the 64-bit ARM CPU, and it's 128 core and all that, with the NVIDIA GPU, four gigs of memory RAM, and smashed everything down into, well, this is the current plan right now, uh, tablet form factor. Now, we're not talking ultra thin, are we, Pedro? We're talking like DS9 tablet, right? Yeah, yeah. we're talking about like... Uh, Half an inch thick, mm. uh, yeah. counting for like the back plate. But this is just taking everything and apart and like flattening it out in hot glue. I mean, dude's making his own breakout. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. No, that's a Judson Nano with everything desoldered off it. Mm. <laughs> this this is a good idea. And he kind of walks through some of the issues. He's like, oh, wait a minute. That's display port's got to be wired up like that. It's backwards, but progress is being made. Mm hmm. Why we look at it? I mean, it, it looks industrial, but I'd carry that around. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I'm completely unopposed to an idea of like a thicker tablet. And the base concept, even for like the hardware that he picked, it's like that's solid. Something which can browse the web, play videos, and run some apps at the same time, yeah. all while providing a smooth experience. And if we've learned anything mm -hmm. from past attempts at that particular dream is that it's a bit of a unicorn to nail down. So, no, seriously, do it. <laughs> do create something out of this that Please. people can actually make or <laughs> buy already made. We need this. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> We definitely need something successful in this area. You know, I've always wanted a modular portable device, and there have been several cell phone projects that have never came to fruition, such as the Fairphone 2 developed by Fairphone, which was the, the first uh, modular um, cell phone. And it would be actually, I think I would like this better as a tablet than a cell phone, just because, you know, a tablet is a, a consumption device you often use at home. And even though it's it's... It's thicker, but that's okay when you're at home using it. <laughs> so, and if you're laying down in bed, sense. it's already resting on your chest. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little thicker and heavier. No biggie. <laughs> I like the idea. And yeah, maybe it depends on what the Jetson power usage is. I don't think it's astronomical, yeah. but here's the thing. I mean, if you're going to build something extra thick, you can put a big battery in it too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Have you ever cracked open an iPad? It's 99% battery, man. There's like one little yeah. compute board in it. <laughs> so I'm down with that. And I don't understand. I, I guess maybe it's just the market because there's a bunch of things. I remember when like the Surface Book or the f tablets, it's like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, we've locked this thing down. And I'm like, boo. Microsoft, mm, I would have, I would have swallowed yeah. my pride and bought one to have yeah. like the next day, you know, with like battery life that's usable. You know, at least give me, let me pretend for like an hour and a half, <laughs> a day. Did you know, like the unicorn of the sixteen hours of active use of battery life? That's what people want in a tablet, and you know, th this is based on the Jetson Nano, uh, that Shield tablet that I have. It's been going on for way past its recall date, because it was recalled. <laughs> uh, but it is a genuinely good performing tablet, and the battery goes on for, like, active use. Goes on for, mm. like, 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty it's good. Nice. Yeah, for a 1920 really by 1200 screen, 8-inch form factor, it is very thin. Uh, but that's a really nice tablet, and they're not making any more because now they call it the Nintendo Switch. Well, I also think one of the things <laughs> that would require a lot of attention is we all want this right up until the point till we actually use it, because unless you have a touch interface that is touch from beginning to end, it is a miserable experience. I'm thinking, yeah. like, even something that was designed to be, you know, touch compatible, like Windows 10 and tablet mode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is horrifying because I have a Windows oh, yeah. 10 tablet and it's like ah, I've gotten so frustrated it's back in the I mean it would have been anyway but I mean genuinely angry at the device it's like I don't know how to say no 
go away. It, <laughs> it's like trying to use Gnome 3. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the KDE Plasma, uh, the, the KDE Plasma Touch or... I don't, can't, honestly can't remember what they call it. You know it. what I, I don't aim for, what I'm like, I, just, I don't like that. I don't go for, I use it with just like light. I'm not going for that. Just like give me <laughs> the, uh, old and boring. Hey, maybe you uh, know about a tablet we should be playing with or something we should know about. Or maybe we mm -hmm. got something wrong. Maybe we got something right. Who knows? Or maybe just like, hey, man, what type of things do you like? Or a question, a thought, a hint, or an allegation? Pedro. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. pinch thoughts allegations or things better left than said. I, I like to That's... think that you just said pinch thoughts and it's like, oh, pinches. <laughs> email pinches too well you can absolutely email us a pinch if you so feel inclined just make sure to go to lacegamecast.com you hit the contact <laughs> button and pick LWDW from the little show box uh, the rest of it is just your typical things if you are behind a VPN uh, as most people are nowadays let's be honest Google may ask so um are you human? And it may ask you that repeatedly. So yeah, just bear with it. it it'll eventually get through. Uh, as long as you give us, you know, a legit email address, because if it doesn't resolve, then we don't see your things. It, it, our, our spam golems, pretty brutal. I, I mean, I check it once a week to make sure nobody got trapped in the uh, machine. But yeah, that that's pretty interesting. That thing is very frighteningly efficient. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what do we have? Oh, man. Frizo. Hey, buddy. Frizo. Yeah. That's why you showed up. You're like, ah, what yeah. if they're going to read the thing? I better show up live just in case. Here you go. <laughs> Good, Frizo. Your reward. <laughs> Pedro? Okay. So, Every... Frizo is like, oh, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, here, here uh, Frizo sent us a, a really nice uh, comment. Every article I read about the wasp prior to the show. Granted, this was only two or three ones. Have we're talking all about mentioned wasps. We're talking about from insects. last week. Last week. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> the new malware. The, the, new uh, wall, the new wall, malware called the Hidden Wasp. Wall. Wall. <laughs> malware. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, so uh, to the show, uh, granted, this was only two or three ones. Have all mentioned that it, it is likely a stage two secondary paid load, etc. thing. E.g., uh, Fosbytes says, however, security researchers still don't know the actual infection vector. They suspect that the malware was spread in systems already controlled by the hackers. So it could be said that Hidden Wasp is being used as a secondary payload. Your source linked article that we used last week also says evidence shows in high probability that the malware is used in target attacks for victims who are already under the attacker's control. But yes, clickbaity headlines are horrible. <laughs> uh yeah, yes, Fre Frezzo, that's why we kind of, you know, didn't didn't, you know, take that one too seriously, but it is oh, something we have on, to Jill, pay attention me to. Out. I specifically <laughs> said, yeah, most of these articles tend to yeah. gloss over the fact that it is a stage 2 or secondary payload type of thing. And yeah, you mentioned three articles. Well, uh, you probably read the first three articles that came out and then you said, oh, it's one another one of those. Oh, it's another one of those. Yeah, the original articles, like the ZDNet one and the Fosbytes one, they all mentioned that. And uh, yeah, like I the article we had last week dude you yes you went back and listened to it you called it a clickbaity headline seriously yeah <laughs> yes exactly like, okay. because it is i know <laughs> you can't really like i said last week it's it's not yeah. you know fun to have a headline that's oh uh second uh secondary stage payload malware uh is infecting linux servers. oh my god that sounds weird where's this article page i need to read it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah th see that doesn't drive clicks no one cares about that because it's linux we know that uh once the system is compromised you can actually wreak all kinds of havoc with it but mm -hmm. yes what we but... want to know <laughs> is what is that initial how did it get there? I mean, listen. How did it get compromised? You know, 
at the end of the day, right now, until we get some hard numbers and hard facts, I mean, you, 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 unless you're going to say your fanfic's better than my fanfic, because that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I can speculate uh, all day. I, I'm curious as to what it is. That's pretty much, that's my entire mm-hmm. hot take on it. I'm like, I yeah. want to know what the vector is. I'm like, well, I can do, no, I want to know. Yeah, because mm-hmm. payloads, yeah, okay, a stage two payload, yeah, that can be very damaging and can do some horrible things. But the system's already compromised. I mean, yeah. what the so payloads, like, what's like compromised a, it in the first yeah, place? Yeah, what started it? That, yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. If your payload's a pipe wrench that you knocked out the security guard with to yeah. install it, I mean, uh, anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to do it for this episode of Weekly Daily Wednesdays. So we're going to bounce out of here. Thanks, everybody, for showing up live. If you can, after the fact, of course, most of you know, it's an audio podcast, and that's where everyone is. <laughs> hey, since you're listening, we have a video version if you want to see that. I don't recommend it, but we're here anyway. It's fun. We're going to bounce out of here and roll some credits. How about that? Does that sound like a plan? Maybe. Yay! Sounds good. <laughs> Wow, right. you know, big big show. <laughs> part of me is very glad that we chose to feature this comment from uh, Frezzo and not the other. Yes, one. <laughs> that was a screechy Riri comment. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The one on that. You, the, the you one on YouTube. Immediately yeah. lose me if you gra- if you if you score like thirty percent on grammar. I, I can't. Help you. <laughs> Wait, let me rephrase that. If you do 30% on grammar and it's obvious that you're a native English speaker, you're mm-hmm. just dumb. <laughs> and, and the interesting bit is, is he's calling us names because, uh, I don't know, I guess he played a part in making Hidden Wasp really famous. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why he'd be so angry about it. YouTube comments, bro. YouTube yep. comments. <laughs> <laughs> And I liked your response, uh, Pedro. That must have been you that responded no, that to was him. Ben. <laughs> it was Ben. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for liking my response, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we appreciate all people who who watch the show, whether they I, agree with us or hurt. not. I mean, it was well worded, clever, and um, <laughs> diabolical. So it, I mean. Attributing that. Oh, your comment, not the original. Right. Okay. Yeah, mine. Yeah. Yeah, your comment. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Okay. Bye, chat realm. We love you. <laughs>